goodbye family goodbye goodbye well guys I'm here at the two sisters at Plumgar so it's a real nice place in the Lake District plenty parking I've just actually met up with my mum dad and sister had a nice breakfast I'll pop a picture in here so you guys can see how tasty it looks and now I'm on my way to give you guys all my likes and all my dislikes on the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 so if that video sounds like something you want to watch keep watching and I shall roll the intro the biker clear we shall go 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 Eskimo mo mo right I haven't set my sat nav I don't really know where this road goes but it'll be nice to have a ride along and see where it ah guys you witness that I just got hit in the face by a bug <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where this road goes, but it'll be nice just to have a ride along. Have a ride along, have a chill. It's spring. It's gorgeous out here. These roads are bloody beautiful. Life is a-okay. I feel like motorbiking makes everything better. It just makes life all right what a big long sweepy road so Royal Enfield is a brand that is extremely new to my channel the first taste of Royal Enfield that I had was being invited to the HNTR 350 launch in London or the Hunter 350 as you guys will probably know it as even though for the UK licensing and stuff it had to drop the U and the E, HNCR now I can't lie I've had a bit of a, a lone bike heavy month and Mike has actually put a lot of miles on the interceptor and his opinion is that he absolutely loves it he says it's a bike that you can just do anything on he said in terms of specification and everything like that nothing on it is is exceptional but it does everything well across the board and that's what he likes yeah and that's your early baby <laughs> hey We've got 47 brake horsepower. So one of the things that I really like about the Humble Interceptor 650 is it's calm, chilled, plod along, go adventure, nature. 47 brake horsepower. It's not going to rip your arms off. But it's just a great bike for just jumping on and going exploring. I recently did a pillion vlog on this bike with Mike. Now this vlog might go live before it, I'm not quite sure. If that vlog has gone live and you've seen it, then that will really show you that it's a bike that you can just take anywhere and you don't have to kind of worry about it if that vlog hasn't yet gone live then you guys are in for a treat when that one does because the scenery on it is spectacular but yeah I like its relaxed nature the bike's not highly strung it's just a very nice plodder bike 
I think this bike is kind of suited to somebody that, you know, is happy to take in the scenery, isn't all that interested in going, you know, as fast as the bike can go or as fast as kind of they can go. Even though it is capable. If you guys haven't seen my first ride impression of the Triumph Thruxton, Mike actually rode, which way is it? Hmm, we'll go this way. We're gonna get lost today and that's fine, that's what it's all about. But Mike actually rode the Royal Enfield in front and I think Mike was great proof that the Royal Enfield can get a hustle on if you want it to. But I think it is best suited for people that are either new to riding and want something that's not going to frighten the bejeebus out of them or people that have been riding for quite a while but aren't bothered oh i've got flies in my visor people that aren't bothered about you know the the fast paced life it's like now i've no intention to see how fast i can get around these bends i just want to just want to take all the view in and bimble along and just enjoy what the world has to offer not necessarily what the bike has to offer if that makes sense yeah there's lots of flies today i just shut my visor and i think i just trapped about 20 in here with me wow sheesh do you know what i have been going to some places with great views recently in my videos don't get me wrong, Rivington will appear in quite a lot of them just because of how convenient it is. So yeah, I need to get some last minute videos out. You know, there's some great roads over there, but sometimes it's just nice to delve a little bit further afield. And today we're in the lakes. Other things that I like about this bike, I love the aesthetics. I love the twin dash with the analog dials. I love the bar with this this strut across it or whatever you call them. I love the bar and mirrors. I always feel like bar and mirrors add a little bit of coolness to bikes and also they're really clear. I, uh, I did a bit of motorway mileage this morning and they were great. Can't really complain. Wow, what a pleasant little village. Just imagine living here out the way. Having cute little pink flowers climb in your house. It's just idyllic. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now I'm just gonna go left here. Don't ask why, there's no rhyme or reason. The Black Labrador. Wow, that road does look good, but we'll stick to where we want to go. Oh, this road actually looks quite nice. So we're in a 30. Let's go. Absolutely love the looks. I love just modern modern classics or modern retros, whatever you want to call them. And I think Royal Enfield have done a great job of making a fun, affordable and attainable motorcycle. Like these bikes have been out for a while. Have we got a hairpin? Excuse me. Not sure what gear I'm in there because I've got no gear indicator but I don't really care to be quite honest yeah I was in the wrong gear that's fine I'm just chilling like if you guys know me and you know my style of riding and stuff you know that if I was on say a street triple or an 890 Duke or something like that you know that I'd probably be giving it I'd be licking on a bit 
like on these roads but with the Enfield with the Enners I'm just I've no intention of it I just like to uh just like to pot around just have a chill it's just so nice one of the things that I class as a positive that maybe some people won't class as a positive depending on your personal preferences I like the Billy Bog standard nature of this bike I like its basic charm it's a pretty you know pretty raw very kind of primitive back to the olden days style of riding and I say that because we haven't got all the super mod cons. We haven't got all the gadgets and gizmos and wizardry. Hell, we haven't even got, you know, super nice, super good suspension. You know, excellent twin discs. You know, excellent braking. I mean, don't get me wrong, it will stop you. Of course it will. But it, oh wow, look at this. But yeah, it hasn't it hasn't got all the quick shift of the auto blipper, it hasn't got self-cancelling indicators, it hasn't got backlit switch gear, it hasn't got a TFT, it hasn't got all these things. And I rate it for that. Because so so much in the marketplace now, everyone is competing on the technology front. Everybody wants the latest thing, whether it's, you know, uh, radar activated cruise control, stuff like that. Next stage, you know, your bike's gonna make you a coffee when you reach your destination. But what I absolutely love, bit of break, look at that, no drama for the light. What I just love about the Royal Enfield is that it's got none of it. There's not really much to to need to learn or research. You don't really have to get the owner's manual out to, to work out how to switch the bugger on, if that makes sense. And I think that is, you know, one of the, the big pulls and the big, wow, the big appeals of the Interceptor 650. It's like that guy, he's having a right old tune. And on these, you know, roads of this surface, I don't blame him. But I just want a bimble. I want a bimble, I do. So I know somebody called Jed Baines. Jed, I'm giving you a shout out because I think you're a top gentleman. Jed was saying to me, and I, th I think he's coined it perfectly. So Jed actually bought a F900. Jed, forgive me, I can't remember whether it was an R or an XR. I think it was probably an XR. I think it was an XR. And he recently got rid of that and got himself a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And he loves it. He absolutely adores it. And he likes it because of the aforementioned reasons just now about being able to chill, relax, take in the scenery. The bike can move if you want it to move, but it's not going to rip your arms off. You know, for people that are maybe not spring chickens, I'm not, I'm not meaning you, Jed, um, this doesn't apply to you, but if you're not a spring chicken and you just want a, a bike that, you know, can keep you riding and you can have fun getting about on it, you know, it's a real good option for you. It genuinely is. Oh, I've no idea where I am. There's no signs really giving it away. Kendall. I think I'm at Kendall. So yeah, Jed is, Jed is happy about buying the Interceptor. He, he said that, you know, the suspension's not groundbreaking, the brakes aren't groundbreaking, but everything is good enough. 
and it just is more simple back to basics riding that I think anybody can enjoy whether they're an experienced rider or whether they're a newbie I mean for me I think this would make a great second bike for me because you guys know I do like something a bit a bit more fruity or at least with a bit more power than 47 brake that's why in the past I've had street triples I've got a GS now um, 136 brake horsepower on the GS it's comfy it's got all the mod cons heat grips it's got my nav you know I just I just like it um, but I think a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 for me I would love one as a second bike and I kind of love to do a bit of a Missenden flyer on it I'd love to customize it I'd love to make it my own I'd like to, you know, get some maybe Hagen shocks on. I just really like to turn it into a bike that I think it can be. And you know, the suspension, it's not bad, bad. It's perfectly manageable. It's perfectly decent. It, it is a little bit undersprung and a bit soft. But... I mean, if you haven't ridden anything else, or you've come straight up from a 125, then you're not really going to miss it, because you're not going to know what you're missing, if that makes sense. But obviously, if you come from something with, you know, better suspension, with a lot of adjustability and stuff like that, then you may... Oh, hello! Then you may well find that the suspension is a bit, a bit gash. One for a better word. Yeah, one of the things that I really like about this bike is how it behaves on the motorway. Yeah, we'll go this way. It behaves excellently, to be fair. It's got more than enough poke in it to do 70 and above. And I actually find it pretty comfortable. Yeah, I've ridden this bike today for approximately two hours or so and I'm not struggling with the seat. Now this is a very personal thing, so I don't just think, oh, Kate doesn't struggle with the seat, so I won't. Because I know that, you know, this bike's been out a while. There's a lot of reviews out there from uh, a lot of different riders with a lot of different body types. And there are some people that do find it uncomfortable. So if you are, like, if that is a big concern of yours, definitely see if you can get some kind of extended test ride. But personally, I don't have any grievances with the seat after, well, at least two hours of riding. So yeah, motorway, really good, I find. It all kind of circles back to that point that it is just a bike to do everything. I feel like you're not scrambling for power in the towns or you know country roads you're not you're not wishing begging that it had a bit more to give things that i don't like so much i would like it if i had like an information button there which would change the screen you have to press this button in the center just to work through some very very basic information it would be nice if they put like the time on there because sometimes it's just nice to know what time it is and also just have like an information button there sometimes i find that the the twin um dash on occasion it's happened once when i first got the bike and it hasn't happened since so i don't know whether you know it was something to do with the air temperature or anything like that or a change in air temperature but i got a little bit of condensation inside the dash now let me know if you own an interceptor 650 and that's something you've experienced or let me know if you think it's probably like a, a one-off but it is something if i'm being completely truthful that i did experience on the bike and it was only a slight bit on both clocks um quite low so it didn't really impact anything that i was looking at oh what's all this beautiful another thing that i would have liked to have seen i do like a gear indicator 
I can't lie, I just like knowing what gear I'm in at all time with a quick glance. This morning I went to set off and the fuel bar literally said what it says now, half a tank. I switched it on, rode down the road and it was flashing empty. So it kind of, you know, I was a bit, not a bit late, I was a bit late, but I'm always late so that's not the bike's fault. Um, yeah, it just threw me off a little bit because I was about to join a motorway and I thought, oh, yeah, I don't want to be running out or using the expensive fuel of the motorway. And then, of course, my final dislike, I would probably say, is I would like it to have a bit firmer suspension, but I don't... Oh, look at all these bikes. Oh, scooters. Scooter gang. <laughs> look at them all. Hey. So yeah, I would like some, you know, slightly firmer suspension. Yeah, some slightly firmer suspension would make me happy on this bike. Well guys and girls, I hope you have enjoyed my quick little video on the likes and the dislikes of the Royal Enners or the Royal Enfield, sorry I need to stop being colloquial <laughs> or the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 despite its little nitpicky things that I find like a little bit not even irritating, just mildly inconveniencing I actually really really like this bike, I think it's a solid bike so I hope you've enjoyed this little video of my likes and my dislikes. If you have enjoyed it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free to do so, it doesn't cost you guys anything. And it just gives me a, a little bit of support in growing my channel, which allows me to continue putting videos out there. Thanks again for watching guys, and until the next one, take care and ride safe. Bye.